Messy mullets, an overdose of 80s fashion, and an audience that never stops screaming. Now here's the idiot who's going to spend the rest of the video talking about it, Quasar 49! <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Quasar 49, and welcome back to another entry in the discussion log. This week we're checking out something that you cannot go another minute not knowing about, and I'm here to introduce you to it. In case you don't know, I love the 70s and the 80s. Since the age of about 11, I've been collecting technology, books, films, posters, and pretty much anything from the eras you can think of. I grew up on VHS tapes of TV shows from the era, listened to music on my Walkman into school as I wore my flares and... got bullied... a lot. <clears throat> but one of the shows that I watched constantly while everyone else was obsessed with Kick, anyone remember that? I don't care, WAS FUNHOUSE! <laughs> Funhouse was a kids game show that ran from 1989 to 1999 here in the UK. Hosted by Pat Sharp's mullet and co-hosted by Pat Sharp, it was mainly aired on Friday afternoons, making it the ultimate way to start your weekend. Welcome along, the weekend definitely starts here. <laughs> oh yeah, boy! What happened on the show was pretty straightforward, but the way it was done makes it ten times better. The aim of the game was to get as many points as possible so you could go into the funhouse at the end and get tons of prizes. You had two teams, one yellow and one red, both supported by the iconic twin cheerleaders Melanie and Martina Grant. Each team was of two students who went to the same school, competing against another team from a different school. What followed was... <sighs> the most amazing freaking show I've ever seen in my life. Go for it! <laughs> It's time for Funhouse! Wacky contestants, messy games, the fun car Grand Prix race, and a crazy chase to win lots of prizes. Now here's the guy that puts the fun in Funhouse, Pat Sharp! Oh! I mean, come on! This is some high quality stuff right here. Number Jack, get out of here! Funhouse. The voice kids, are you kidding me? Funhouse! Unlike television shows nowadays, there was a certain charm to the commercialism and craziness of shows in the 80s and the 90s. Even adverts were more creative. But that's a video for another day. Unlike kids' game shows now, which there are extremely few of, Funhouse was just pure excitement from start to finish. With only 25 minutes to pack in three different games, several questions, introductions, the Funhouse itself, and... Terrible jokes. Now, whatever you do with the counting, right? I want you both to come clean with me. Uh oh. Ah uh, ha! Ha ha! Do you get it? He said, "Both come clean with me." Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to ignore it. <laughs> this show was out of control. So hold on tight, everyone, because this video, just like the show, is going to be all over the place. This is a full review of Funhouse, the greatest game show of all time. Here's how it worked. The yellows and the reds would compete in three messy games, always involving gunge or whatever you want to call that, which were then followed up by questions one of the teammates had to answer. One game would be for the boys of the teams, another for the girls, and the third and final game would be for all four of them, and whoever won the games would then get 25 points for their team. There was also a US version of the show, but we need to try and ignore that, okay? okay let's do the butt dance one more time. Bring out the cheerleaders. <laughs> After the messy games, the teams would get a chance to go freaking go-karting around the funhouse, which was the final chance to get points before the winners were announced. As I mentioned earlier, the aim of the game is to get points, because only one team could actually go into the funhouse at the end of an episode. Whoever had the least points would go away with a few participation prizes, and the winning team would be able to run around the funhouse for two minutes to grab the bigger prizes, which were named on tags. 
And while you may feel sorry for the losing team, I think they often got a better deal than the winners did. Granted, there was a hidden power prize in the funhouse, which was often a holiday somewhere or something high-tech for the time, but the losers, who were often the Reds... <laughs> Don't worry, Reds, you'll get them someday! Got the better prizes because they were official Funhouse merch. As well as keeping the shirts, some of them got rulers, fanny packs, and the luckiest, whom I'm seriously jealous of, got jackets. I'll say that again. Fun. House. Jackets. The amount of money those could go for now on eBay. And you may be thinking, Quasar, bum bags and jackets, are you kidding me? Well. This is the 80s, and the prizes in the funhouse were okay, but because there were so many of them, they were mm, pretty basic. Fly down the fireman's pole and find a fantastic Atlas and Oh, wow. Ooh, a globe. Oh, wow. Oh! That's okay. Oh, that's pretty good. For the time. Open your own bank account! Oh, a dressing gown. Oh, a compass! Oh! Oh, binoculars. Go get that compass! Go get that compass! Oh man, I need that compass! Oh, I've got my compass. <laughs> but enough of that. I'm not here to criticise my favourite game show. I'm here to tell you what's so good about it. But then again, if you know me, I do love a lot of things because they're bad or unsafe. So, so this is seven things that we should probably know before going in the next episode, and maybe it'll make it a little bit more funny. Number one, Pat had to take a holiday from his popper job to. Pro <laughs> <laughs> Number four, the studio was muckier than Wheel of Fortunes, and you won't know the reference, but Wheel of Fortune was pretty rough. It's hard to clean up all the mess and all the gunge that all had to be cleared up before the go karts could go around because they were in the same place in one small studio. Um. There were two Scottish ladies, oh god, who used to come in with a mop and just be really angry and say, Bloody messy people! That's not a Scottish accent. Do a Scottish accent for me. Oh, oh wait, I don't know how to do a Scottish accent. Scot Scotland. Bloody That's messy good. people! That sounds f***ing Irish. Bl <laughs> Number five. Pat was barred. Pat, the guy with the long hair, was barred from the funhouse. Oh. And number so. six. <laughs> But he still went in the fun house anyway. Uh, I must admit it, I did walk around it. I would go up, look at it, and realize it wasn't actually all that well put together. It was made for television, like most things. And yeah, there were some things that were a bit rickety and maybe a little bit, well, it wouldn't have passed health and safety. Oof. That's probably why, like, as soon as an inspector came in, I was just like, yeah, the f show's cancelled, my. <laughs> Number seven, the gunge probably wouldn't pass health and safety these days, either. That was, that was pretty much like every single game that we played. We were dipping kids' heads in this stuff, and they would look at me and go, What is that? And I'd say, I don't know, stick your head in it! Who cares what it is? Oh, that's... oh... <laughs> I don't know how they made the gunge, but they used to stir it backstage with a big piece of wood, so I don't know how many splinters came off, but we never hurt anyone. <laughs> so, yeah, the Funhouse wasn't technically the most safe place in the world. Pat Sharp, the presenter of Funhouse, has mentioned that some aspects of the show were extremely crude, or not up to today's health and safety standards, which to be fair, is one of the reasons why I love it so much. Don't get me wrong, the gunge, the fashion, and the constant, constant ear-bleeding noise from the crowd screaming every five seconds! It's great! Love it! Don't hurt me. But, I mean really, really look at some of this and tell me it doesn't look like the indoor equivalent of Action Park. But, in all seriousness, no one ever actually got hurt on the show. Or, at least, no one sued. <laughs> Although, while the set might not have been incredibly safe, that didn't stop the show's success. Presenter Pat Sharp was one of the driving forces behind that success, with an abundance of high energy every time the programme graced your screens on a Friday. Viewers would run home after school, eager to watch the wackiest, craziest, most fun show of the week and always be greeted by a long-haired, colourful-clothed guy, giving it his all every second he was on screen. He was also a pretty cheeky boy. Smashing them like this. Oh! So oh! Bad. The cheek! <laughs> that was cheeky. Look at his face, that was sly. So yes, oh yes! Oh! oh that, 
He probably just like, actually Fuck did that on you purpose. Sly, I feel boy. so sorry for her. Marvelous, says penguins. Up you go, up to the top, then go on. Your Careful. mission, girls. Should you decide to accept it, and uh, you have no choice. <laughs> hey, there was no blip. <laughs> I bet I get one this time, watch. And there you go, you see. Practice <laughs> makes perfect. 20 so far. 30. 40, now the white one. Pat, Pat's a cheeky boy, 50, watch this. 75. And can I have that extra bit, please, the one I missed at the beginning? No? Get it next week then, alright. Total score! 215! <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, Pat got fired after this very episode. So here we are. Dumbbell. Here you go. Dumb blood. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say that to you. Of course not. No. Oh, heavy mission. Put that one down. Oh, oh, okay. oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was that? Literally. Literally. Oh. oh. <laughs> this is painful. I'm going through it though, you're not even listening. Same with the twins. Constant high energy and big smiles all around, because let's face it, this is a pretty amazing job to have. Even if it wasn't too easy. Yeah, quick tiny detail I forgot to mention. Each episode could take up to seven hours to make. Which, need I remind you, there are 149 of. Try smiling for that long. You can't. I'm not saying the excitement is fake, because it isn't, but in an interview with the Radio Times, Pat revealed seven different things that went on that... Oh, just make it so much better. Number two, one 22 minute episode would take up to seven hours to make. They started on Saturday, went to the next week Friday, and we'd do two shows a day, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. They would take six or seven hours to film each. Oof. So we'd have, oh I know, we'd have 14 hour days with lunch in the middle, which later turned into the slime, and it was really hard work starting, at, uh, starting filming at 7 a.m. and finishing at 9 p.m. God. Then that'd be 14 weeks. That's three and a half months of television shows, so we only did it for one week a year and that was it. Although nowadays it's even worse. If you're doing a game show or quiz show, they probably do 15 a day. But seven hours! Quiz, that's more than you work. And you do <laughs> okay! So, have I advertised it well enough yet? This is the most 80s you can pack into a show, and if this is the first you're hearing about it, then what are you still doing listening to me? Go watch an episode and see what you think. Thanks to Danny Kerner, you can go and watch almost every episode aired, so there's no excuse not to rerun the fun. But if you do like this show, and you're a big fan of it like me, then hopefully you've enjoyed this little look into its history and production. But let's admit it, we're all kind of lost now, aren't we? The final episode aired on December 29th, 1999, and a decade of fun came to a close. Although, for some of us, the episodes just aren't enough. Just look at this thing! Never mind all the risky stuff going on in the background, wouldn't you just have loved to have been on this show? I would! I mean, how cool is that? You don't get kids shows this big anymore? Yeah, they've gone up in production value and many fantastic developments have come in the last 20 years, but the fact still remains that there are hundreds of people out there that wanted to run around this funhouse and never got the chance. In 2017, there was a crowdfunding campaign named Bring Back Funhouse in an attempt to resurrect the show as an adult attraction for those who wanted to go on it while it was still airing. A whole team had been assembled, they had Pat Sharp and both twins ready to do it all again, they had plans and mock-up sketches. This seemed to be the ultimate and only way of it ever coming back. It even got some press coverage because that's just how popular Funhouse was. But unfortunately, that never came to be. Even with the television coverage, it seemed barely anyone knew about the project, and therefore it tanked. But how cool would that have been, though? You could run around this huge complex with five of your friends. To heck with the 120 minutes of waiting for Darren Brown! I'll stand in line for 120 years just to get into that building! Okay, I may be going a bit far there, but you see my enthusiasm. And if I were a millionaire, I would fund it without question. But sadly, I'm not. No word has been heard of the project since, and it seems like Funhouse is destined to stay as it is. Which is fine. 
I'd prefer that than some modern interpretation mucking it all up, but still, I am so desperate to see it for myself. If only there was someone who could bring it back. Someone who has the knowledge of the show to allow players into the funhouse once more. Some way to make it new and fresh, but still represent the madness of the original. Anything. It doesn't even have to be real. It could be in a game or- <gasps> of the week this week is... Stagbury 10! For... well... take your pick. <laughs>